Welcome to Life in Headlock. I'm your Mississippi Mad Man, Logan Creed, and you are? LeBron Coso. Hi, how's it going? Yeah. Oh, hey. Okay. Easy. All right. This is a little interview I've been doing to try to help get the indie guys out there. We share it. We get booked. I don't know if that's true, but we try to try it for that. But uh, I don't edit, so if we screw up, it still goes to YouTube. So <laughs> don't screw up. I will. So you yeah. try not to. That's all, man. I'll do my best. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, tell me, have you been a wrestling fan your whole life? Pretty much. Uh, let's see. I, uh, I was probably elementary school. Um, and the first match, actually the first, the first thing I watched was Sunday Night Heat. And we always had the old WWF video games, so I remember, you know, seeing Shawn Michaels. And it was back when Shawn Michaels just joined the NWO, and I thought that was like the coolest thing ever. And since then, I've been hooked and watching on a consistent basis, so it was great. All right, uh, well, where were you trained and who trained you? Uh, well, I trained in a couple different places. Uh, I first got started uh, straight out of high school. I actually did pro wrestling for my senior project. Because uh, that's, that's all I wanted to do. And uh, the guy that trained me, they ran shows right up the street from my school. And his name's Big Daddy Edwards. And he trained me up to his retirement uh, in 2012. And then that same year, I started training with uh, CWF Mid Atlantic. And the same people that trained Trevor Lee, No Way Jose, Andrew Edwards, pretty much. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, when you were training, is there anything you had problems with, or did you, were you a natural? Well, with me, like, when I first got in the ring, like, I was a natural, but, you know, they wasn't really trying to teach me how to do everything, you know, correctly. So, yeah, I was doing flip bumps, but my head was snapping back and going home and waking up the next day, can't move, just to see if I really want to get into this. But, you know, uh, I, I don't think learning has ever been an issue. It's just... Uh, reaching out and getting that knowledge to teach. Yeah. Every time getting rain or something uh, every time. Yeah, every time. All right. Well, uh, is your name you go by your real name? If not, where did you get your name from? LeBron's my middle name. Right. It is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's actually, I was named after my great grandpa. His, his name was Labor. And then I didn't like Labor, so I changed it to LeBron. <laughs> but it's, it's spelled the same. It's spelled L A B R O N. So, that's how people separate me from the actual basketball player. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, well, uh, tell me about your first match. Who was it with? What was the crowd like? And did you win or lose? Oh, well, my first pro wrestling appearance was like, uh, it was weird. Like, I was working security guard, uh, and uh, I was, it was in a small town called Eden, North Carolina. And uh, the tag team champions at the time, they were called the Black Knights. And there were only two black guys in the whole company. And one of the black guys didn't show up. And then they're like, well, they got the defending titles. What about that black guy over there sitting in the corner? <laughs> Security guard. Wow. Put him in some tights. It'll be Black, black Knights 2.0. And you know, ever since then, I've been a wrestler. <laughs> so that's wow. it's not it's not the best way to be introduced. Yeah, kind of uh, awkward, yeah. <laughs> because you know, I wasn't fully trained uh, when I first had my first match, but that was my first match experience. I'm taking it with you being a step-in champion. Yeah. You won, yeah, pretty right? much. Yeah, we lost the titles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but your first match was as yeah. a tag team you know, champion. Wow. Was like, my fault. You were the pin? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I blame it on the grand game. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. Well, uh, tell me about your favorite match that you've had so far. My who? Your favorite match. You got a favorite one? Well, I, I had a, a ton of great matches, uh, or favorite matches. Uh, uh, I can't really pick one out because, you know, there's so many matches I had that, you know, had importance to it. The one that I can look back at right now, which happened uh, uh, this year, was actually at an event called Masters of the Ring in Wilmington. And uh, I had, there was, it was a, it was a fan fest show, and it was a main show. And they pretty much had all the names, Jeff Jarrett, Kevin Nash, Al Snow there, and a lot of other people. And, I had my first match in the Fan Fest and Al Snow was watching. 
So I went back to his table and, you know, he pretty much, I sat there and listened to him for like 30 minutes straight, just pretty much tell me everything I did wrong. And I'm like, like, dang, I've been doing this wrong the whole time. So it was me and my, my tag team partner, James, there. And together with LeBron James. Uh, and we were both just listening. We're asking questions like, what do you think of this? What do you think of? Uh, and he was asking us questions like, what's a comeback? Well, comeback is wrong. I was like, ah. So like, to a point where we just stopped answering questions. But anyway, uh, later that night in the main show, like we were supposed to wrestle as a tag team, LeBron mm -hmm. James. Uh, versus the guys called the Patrick Payne Parade, and uh, Al Snow was watching, and we we can, we had the same common mindset. So we're gonna we're gonna do everything that Al Snow said was right, you know, and we'll see how it works. And we went out just motivated. People were behind it, uh, and we looked back at the table, and Al Snow standing has a big grin on his face. <laughs> So you made yes. him happy, yes. that, he, that made me happy. He shook your hand and yes. said you did it right. Yeah, it was great. He said he enjoyed it still. The uh, course, uh, he still had critique, but you know it was a lot. He said it was a lot better than what he saw earlier, which is great. Well, let me ask you this: In your opinion, which match did you enjoy more, the way you did it or the way he had you do it? Uh, Does that make sense? Yeah, the the way that uh, the way that the him, the feedback that he gave us made a lot of sense, okay. you know, and you know that's to me that's what's about just wrestling matches that actually make sense. Especially when the guys got some pull to you now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, Sweet. yeah. All right. Well, uh, give me your opinion on TV wrestling, WWE, TNA, Lucha Underground, whatever you got. Um, what do you think? What what I what I love the most about wrestling is that there's so many ways to do it and they all can work, you know? So I can't really say, oh, they're doing it this way, they're not the old school way and it's not working, uh, or these guys are just old school and it's not working. But the thing I, I like the most about WWE is like with the help of the developmental system of NXT, it's like the whole machine is working together uh, with independent wrestling and WWE, you know, uh, with the help of NXT, because you got guys coming in that uh, like Cedric Alexander, you know, uh, somebody that I've, I've known uh, and, you know, I got to train with for a couple of training sessions and actually got to get in the ring with. And, you know, just seeing him there, it's like, wow, like, this is like a great opportunity. And, like, I use him uh, for the perfect example uh, because he's the, that, like, I've never seen anything like it. Like, he's at the perfect place at the perfect time, mm -hmm. at the at the peak of his career, to put on a performance like that uh, against Ibushi, and then have the crowd say, "Please sign Cedric," and then Triple H come out and shake his hand. You can't, you can't no, write that. No, there's no way. You can't write that. Like, I didn't make a million years during Triple H yeah. come out. I was like, these fans are going stupid. Like you know that that's probably the most exciting. I feel like today we're probably in one of the most exciting areas of wrestling. Well, uh, what kind of wrestling do you like to watch? Me, uh, I'm a I'm a big fan. Here recently, I'm a big fan of old school stuff. Really? You know? okay. uh, Give me a name. Uh, Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson. Patterson. Really? You know, I actually watched his documentary, and I didn't know how valuable he was mm -hmm. to the company. You know, because uh, all I knew growing up was the Stooge and all of that, and then I watched his documentary. And, and all these people tell him that uh, the reason why this match is so great is because he helped come up the finish because he's always great at uh, finishes and stuff. And I went back and watched his matches and, you know, he was like uh, so far ahead of the wrestlers back in the day, you know, and like, like I'm sitting there watching as a fan and I'm entertained, you know, I'm like, wow, like they did this back, back in the 70s, you know. Have you seen the one where he fought in the slaughter? Yes, that yes, is one yes. Little no, no. Match. Like, if you search, crap, if you search Pat Patterson versus that's the first match that comes up. Dude, that yeah, match is awesome. Great. I love that match. Mm -hmm. Well, do you got any wrestling stories so far? Oh, man, shoot. Well, you got me an Al Snow, but you got another one? Oh, man, God. Me, I, I don't have the, the most, uh, if I do, I just, I lost it because I got short-term <laughs> memory. Yeah, and I a lot know. of other things 
I try to forget because it's embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, like me, I I've always tried to you know keep my nose clean, you know, to stay out of trouble. So my stories are unintentional. You know, it's not like yeah, that's no, it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was gonna say though, but then, 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 then. yeah, I've never met a tag team champion that didn't. Man, yeah. hey. <laughs> Maybe when I hit the 20 year mark in the wrestling, I have like a book to write. So hopefully that's what I can do. All right. Well, uh, so how good a booker you are. Book me your dream opponent. Mm. Well, for me, okay. Well, if I'm going into business for myself, it had to be somebody that if you put his name on a flyer, people are going to be there. And it's going to be somebody that has been known for helping progressing younger people, you know. And the top two names I can think of is The Rock and John Cena, you know. Uh, one of them. Uh, for me, it'd probably be The Rock. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you burn a lot of money, yeah. bro. That's yeah, why yeah, that's a book right there. Yeah, pretty, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to book me against somebody going to help me. Right. You know, if I wrestle The Rock, I said, hey, I wrestle The Rock. Well, uh, in the end, what is your ultimate goal for wrestling? My ultimate goal for wrestling is to know that I've helped put it in a better place than where I found it. You know, that's my ultimate thing. And like, I do a lot with the new guys coming in the business uh, because when I came in, I didn't really have the best training. There wasn't the best schools around when I first came in. Nobody was showing me, you know, uh, tuck your neck and breathe out. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, that's like my main thing is just to help out. I love helping out the young guys. That's cool. Yeah. All right, well, this is the last time, but uh, if you'd like to thank anyone on a personal level that's been there for you, here's your chance. Mm -hmm. uh, number one is my family. Family, like, uh, when, I, when I first, walked into any type of wrestling environment, my dad was there, you know. When I got the chance to promote my first show, my dad was there, you know, my whole family, uh, everything, and they still support me, you know. It's when, uh, when I didn't have any money, they supported me, so I can go travel and wrestle or something, you know. So it's number one on this, this family, because a lot of people don't have family to support, and you know, it's, it's a, it's a sad situation um, when you're really passionate about somebody and people that you love and support. So I was I'm really fortunate to have a family that you know, allowed me at a young age to pursue my dreams. Uh, and now it's become reality. Well, thank you for being alive. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. See you next time. All right.